so here we are again in 3ds Max. I'm going to show you how to make a texture. Of course, in 3ds Max, they like to call them materials. So if we click this button here, these four spheres, that opens the materials rollout. Or, well, yeah, we'll call it the rollout. Now, I'll just create ourselves a box which can then apply textures to. And obviously, you can have multiple textures in one scene. Now, I'll just go on the first one and click diffuse and we'll give it a nice sort of pale blue color look a bit darker there we'll apply that if we click assign material to selection and then that's applied now if we click blue teapot here quick render and that's what we get we get a blue um, surface now obviously um, there are no options you can mess around with such as self illumination you tick color, you can make it glow a different color, or if you just want it to glow the same color, let's say 50, you can instantly you see the difference between 50 and say 0 or 12. <clears throat> and opacity, just like it sounds like, you make it more, you can make it see through, basically. And so if we put that to 50, and we create a box underneath render again, you can see it through this surface here to the box I've created underneath with the default color on it. Now if we put opacity back to 100 and we delete that and create a sphere which we shall have two of. I'll just rotate the view so you see them fairly equally. Now, if we go and copy this texture here, but we want to name it something else so we don't have a clash when we assign them. Now, this one will be texture 1, and this one here will be texture 2. Now, texture 2, I'm going to up the specular level. Oh, you can see it's more glossy. Now, you can also see in the preview there's a distinct difference as well. Now, the higher the glossiness level, the smaller the actual shine or the refraction of light. So, obviously, let's just put it up to 75, and now it's quite nice and shiny. If we render it, it's a lot more obvious. It's actually reflecting the light off it. Now, this is more apparent with curved surfaces. It wouldn't be as obvious with a flat surface. Now, let's delete that and go back to our box. create a third, we'll start working on texture 3 I guess, and basically what's going to happen is I'm going to show you there are more complex ways to do things. You can actually create maps in other programs and import them in. So for diffuse you click bitmap and then you can actually select an image and import it. So it'll actually import most image formats. I tend to go with JPEG and <clears throat> what you can do is let's say gradient yeah, we'll import a gradient, we'll apply that, and if you click this little thing here, show map in viewport, you can see that it is indeed a gradient. Obviously you can mess with settings inside gradient, such as radial, turbulent, regular, and fractal, not as obvious in a gradient texture, but other texture formats, sorry, other maps, it will be much more obvious. Now if we clear that and we go show you a bump map. Now I'm not going to attempt to read, read that out but STU double CO near the bottom it's quite a good texture you can mess around with. Now just as a bump map just as is I'm going to set that to a hundred and we'll render and as you can see it looks like it's sticking out even though it's just a flat texture. So if we rotate that here and do it again that's not quite as obvious but straight on it does look three-dimensional because it, for one it lowers the poly count because you don't actually have to physically model that and it looks three-dimensional without actually having to do that so it's a flat surface and it looks 3d which is a very nice effect that can be done now obviously you can <clears throat> as i said before you can import an image so if we go into photoshop let's say 512 by 512 and create a texture. Ooh, let's 
brush. Texture however we want. You can even throw in text if you really want to. And we'll go save as. And then hmm, that's an excellent thing. So we'll just save it here as test, I guess. We save test, and then we go into here, we click diffuse color and bitmap, click OK, and we'll just find that file path. And we've obviously got test.psd. Open the Photoshop files, it'll open all these formats, and open videos apparently, and we want to open that. We can either collapse layers or have individual layers, we'll just leave it as is, and then we'll apply that. And as you can see, texture looks exactly how I've drawn it. And obviously you can mess around with scaling. For example, let's make it half the size. And it tiles. Obviously that's not going to tile so well, but you can do more things than that. And that's pretty much texturing. That's the basics. Anything you really want to do, you can create just playing around with settings under each, I guess, uh, heading.